name is James Fitzpatrick. So I uh, live in Sydney and practicing in Sydney. Um, started Fitzpatrick and Partners in the year 2000. So we've now been going pretty well on 20 years. We have a Sydney-based studio of just under 50 people, um, work on projects around Australia, but primarily now in Sydney. We don't really specialise in any sector and we've done everything from race courses to um, high-rise commercial towers, hotels, individual homes, um, and now also a lot of education and hospital uses. Mm. Fantastic. So we're talking a little bit today about the Seed House, which won the Timber Design Awards for 2019. Can you tell us a little bit about the, the background on the behind the scenes of what made you or drove you to design this impeccable and build this impeccable building? Yeah, look, it was interesting. Um, it started with a piece of land, obviously. It's a beautiful block of land with an amazing outlook. And I'm looking out uh, over the water now, seeing it. Um, and so living there for, for a while, when we purchased it, it was always a, um, a situation. The land was beautiful, the outlook was beautiful, but the house wasn't amazing. So it was always considered that it was a property that we could redevelop either through a major reno or a new house. So I did design a new home after living here for a couple of years. Um, it's quite a steep site, so that was actually going to uh, have quite significant impacts on building. And uh, it was all basically looking at using initially in uh, situ concrete. So it was all going to be formed up with concrete being the express material, timber trims and highlights, but mainly sort of concrete and steel. We then had that little thing called the GFC, which then put all those plans on hold. I did put the DA in and we got approval on it. And then during GFC, it was really finishing off a few projects and just seeing the same issues um, with quality and finishing and detailing that we'd seen on every other project. And if anything, they were a little bit worse. And really starting to look and think about that issue of quality, time and cost. And then really starting to see that as a generation, we were still doing things and building buildings the same way our parents had built things. Mm. We hadn't really unlocked that equation, yet you know, time was more valuable now, things were costing more. So we were trying to do things quicker and do things cheaper, but do it by doing the same materials and same technologies. So it took it upon us that whilst things were quiet, so well, here's a time to do some studies and look at some different technologies and different ways of building. And I suppose initially it was towards prefabrication, modular construction, DFMA, so building a factory, flat pack, thinking like that, but off doing some of the research it leading to more towards the timber way. And that started with doing one of the Wood Solutions timber tours. It was the first mm -hmm. one um, off to the UK. And so I do remember walking around the building sites um, we visited in the UK, a lot of schools being built under their BER program, all using this material called CLT. So it was something I'd never seen before. It was incredible material. I remember running around taking photos of some of the drawings just to understand how this stuff was built and put together, thinking this is fantastic material. Um, and then realising a lot of that detailing wasn't so appropriate for our environment anyway. But um, so that started that fascination came back and really did more study, um, looked at it more, came in touch with XLAM in New Zealand at the time who were at least producing product down here, led lease for them playing with some buildings and really started to explore the opportunities for lots of different projects we were working on at the time. Um, and then time came to rethink about the house and it just seemed the logical material to look at doing a basically a cross-laminate timber home Mm -hmm. uh, really situating in the timber because it resolved all those issues i would be worried about quality of construction, speed of construction, accuracy, um, carbon footprint, everything seemed to be addressed by this one material. So it was quite an interesting process and obviously now we find that 95% of the projects we were exploring in the studio are uh, timber, uh, glue lamb or CLT or a combination of both. So looking at the seed house, you've spoken a little bit about what led you to timber. So what are some of the other reasons why you thought this was the most appropriate material to use in general and how you complemented it with other material selections in, in the house to put the best material for the, the right job? Look, I think once the decision had been made that you know, CLT construction was an appropriate way to build for this particular site and it addressed those environmental issues, the carbon sequestering, etc. It just felt right that if you're going to go that way with timber, you go the whole hog. Um, I suppose I'm very believe, a big believer in that old analogy, more than three materials is a waste. So really wanted to keep a really tight palette. Uh, 
there was concern that you know are you making just a timber box uh, we get a lot of people that said oh you're just gonna it's just gonna feel like you're stuck inside a coffin um but reality timber buildings don't do that and i think it's a case that if you go the full hog the strength of the material comes through it's if you weak it off and say oh i'll, I'll do a feature wall on the color or i'll paint that timber white that's when it's that whole piece falls to um, falls away so i think keeping that conviction and saying it's all going to be timbers um and then looking at where we source the other timbers so having a strong play on the whole carbon environmental from forestry growing timbers for the panels we also want to treat that similar logic for all the finishing timbers so using a lot of the hydro wood from tasmania which is basically being sourced out of the bottom of the lakes again it's recycling product it wasn't chopping down old growth forest to great to create our opportunities here so we're very clear on making and understanding the whole pathway of the timber taken before it came to our site so generally timber is the, the dominant material mm. not scared to use steel with timber and use steel where it makes sense yes we could do everything in timber but then some beams become silly sizes so it was an opportunity to explore the steel with timber but just think about the connections think about the finishing on the steel. Um, steel is quite interesting. We went down the old sort of blacksmith route where we've actually seasoned the steel by rubbing, getting it hot, and rubbing oil into it and letting it burn off to give it protection on the steel. So you don't get a painted steel finish. I mean, the steel is this very textural finish which sits very comfortably with the timber. Yeah, I've, I'd like to talk a little bit about the, uh, the engineering. So there's a bit of an engineering marvel as well, the, the building. There's, can you tell us a little bit about the cantilevers that are protruding out of the, the house and how, they, uh, how they're designed? Yeah, so part of the design of the house was the exploration of the material and the potential the material could do and what it could do, but it was also taking it further than maybe just considered the normal way. So we know that it's very good for stacker box buildings, you know, load-bearing walls, simple transfer of loads, but... Everyone also constantly referred to, oh, well, the uh, CLT slab acts as a beam. You can use it as a beam. You can use it to clear span areas, whether it's a roof as a flat plane or turn it vertically as a wall element. So then it was logical to say, well, what's its capacity as cantilevers? So the original application didn't have, um, for planning application, didn't have any significant cantilevers in it. But I was actually working with Barry Young from TTW. He suggested, well, why don't we get rid of that structure and just use the walls of the pods to cantilever out um, and just see how far we can push it. So always keen for a bit of an experiment. It sounded quite easy at the time. Um, so we did achieve the cantilevers, but they were very, very complex. Um, the engineering behind them was significant to the extent that TTW basically he had to reconstruct the CLT panels individual strand by um, strand each lamella of the clt and then do the the critical sort of um, load assessments um, and spent a lot a lot of time they also had some other people then doing some due diligence over that work to double check it as well um, to achieve the cantilevers we got look that they're a little bit bouncy at the end but um, they still work there was also a lot of extra steel reinforcement of the edges of the panels to actually tie the floors and roofs to those cantilevering walls acting as beams and then tie down into rock. So there was some significant detail that came out. It wasn't quite as easy as Barry's first throwaway comment. <laughs> it did demonstrate that CLT can cantilever and we've got up to just over six metre cantilevers in the CLT panels. Mm. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, when I first saw a render of it, I, I thought, you know, maybe it's not possible, but then I actually saw the finished photo and absolutely is. So it's a great work by TTW to actually uh, come up with a design to make it work. Well, we've got some significant loads on these of those cantilevers, very big glass, double glazed, sliding steel frame doors. We've got terraces on top of them and also roof gardens. So there's a significant amount of load sitting on top of them as well. And Apparently, so some of that actually helps. Some of that dead load is just helping and keeping it all nice and solid. But we've had no major issues with deflection, no problems with alignments of glazing systems or anything since. So it is showing the material is very stable. Mm. And so during uh, moving on to the construction of the building, tell us a little bit about uh, the, the process there and some of the difficulties and learnings that you had in, in designing or in, in building your own home, um, dealing with suppliers and, and so forth. Wasn't, wasn't too bad in reality. Um, 
the hardest part was finding a builder who was prepared to actually take the job on. A lot weren't really interested because at that time there was one other home being built um, and Len Lee had done their one building in, in Victoria and that was the sum total of the material. So also realising running in practice, I didn't have the time to be there every day. So I needed someone I could trust and get, to get on with the job and with a can-do attitude. So the builder I used had done another house for a client many, many years ago and had always stood by that home, looked after that home for that client, um, maintained a pride in the workmanship of that home. And I felt, well, okay, everyone's got their foibles, but here's someone I can trust who's going to do the right thing. So it was then it was just a matter of convincing him about this new material he'd never heard of. Um, Luckily, he jumped on a plane and went and looked at a whole heap of buildings in the States that have been done in CLT. And then XLAM also helped out and took him across to New Zealand and showed him a lot, a lot of projects there and went through the detail and told him the sort of equipment he would need, etc. before we even started the project. So I think that made it easy because then he was on board. And in reality, as he says, the, the CLT was the easiest part of the job. The, the more, um, harder part was the more complex detailing throughout the rest of the building. And uh, do you, you've got experience on quite a few timber projects now. Is is that across the board that builders can transfer and start using CLT quite simply and installing with it as a material? I'm yet to find a builder who uses the material to say, I'll never do that again. It's usually, oh, that was easy. Oh, I worried about something. Oh, we could have done it so much faster. Oh, geez, it's a shame we didn't plan everything else around how quickly it actually happened. We will next time. So it's that same thing uh, with any new product. It's just people getting comfortable with it. And, you know, it's time and cost. You're putting in a risk. Can I take this risk? Oh, if I do it that way, I know what it's like. I remember when we first moved from a 2D drawing environment into a 3D environment, mm. putting all that time into drawing in 3D in a model up front. Oh, geez. Am I going to get the right stuff out at the end? Am I better off just doing 2D drawings up front and I know what I'm going to get? It's that jump into the unknown and obviously you would never consider doing it the other way um, today. So I think it's the same with the people working timber. A lot of them are saying, geez, why would I do a building of that typography or that style another way when it was so fast? Mm. I think like every material, though, it has its place. So it's not the right place for every product. You know, I pass of this home could probably have been built cheaper and quicker if it had been just done with a steel frame, stud walls and lined with timber boards. But that's not the aesthetic I was after. That's not the, the journey we were wanting to go on and nor the expression of the building. So all those comes into it. So it is horses for courses. Mm. And uh, the building's finished now. It's one of the best massive timber projects within Australia, no doubt. What are some of the lessons learned through this whole design and construction process of uh, your forever home? Um, the uh, detail takes time. I think that's one of the key ones and it takes people to have the right attitude. It's like, we all think where we can pick up and do those little home projects. And it's interesting just over this Easter break, trying a few projects myself again, uh, here at home. And it's where you think your skills are and you know, that the technical way to do things, but it's very different between technically knowing how to do it and physically being able to do it. So it's having those people around you that have those technical skills and years and years of practical skills and listen to how they would put it together, how they would build something. And by working together, taking a bit of what they give, them taking a bit of what you can offer and meeting somewhere in the middle, you get a lot better resolved detail. And that love and care will then come through because then they are passionate about achieving the best outcome of what they were part of the, the concept for, part of the idea before. So that really does come through. 